Hello everybody, so it's officially been just over one year since we first got our hands on Unity ECS 1.0. Now we actually have a new version, version 1.1. So anyways, in today's video, I just wanna talk a little bit about this update and some of the things that we get with it. And yeah, just give a little bit of an update on things because I know it's been a while since I've made a video. I've been hard at work on a netcode for entities, a big multi-hour tutorial where I'm gonna be going through the whole process of creating a game using netcode for entities. I am super excited about that one, and I'll give you a little bit of a preview of the sample project that we're creating at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Also, if you're watching this video on the day that it goes live, I will be traveling out to Amsterdam for Unity's annual Unite event, so I will be there in person, uh, hanging out with the whole Unity community there. So if you do see me, feel free to come up, say hello. Um, I would love to meet you and learn a little bit more about some of the projects that you're working on. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about ECS version 1.1. Now, at the time of recording, this is currently a pre-release version. So if you do want to install it for yourself, you will have to go to the package manager, hit the little plus button and say, add package by name. You can go ahead and type in the package name as well as specifying the version number of 1.1.0-pre.3. So anyways, let's just go over some of the changelog highlights and I of course will include some links to the full changelog down in the description below. Now I'm a little intrigued about why they actually decided to call this ECS 1.1 because it does seem like a little bit of just kind of a continuation of some of the existing bug fixes and small optimizations that they've been making in some of the previous versions. So I'm not sure why they decided to make the jump to the next you know, 1.1 level. But anyways, that being said, there's still a lot of exciting stuff in there. So just going into the entities package, um, we now have a new option in the entity query, which we can use called present, which basically looks for anything that has a component and ignores whether it's enabled or disabled. Uh, because previously when you use something like say the with all and we passed in an enableable component, if that component was disabled on a particular entity, that entity would not fit under that query. Now, there were ways that you could basically ignore the component disabled state, but this gives you just a little bit more control about you know, being very specific about saying, you know, we want to have this component type present and we don't care about the component enabled state for this particular component, but maybe there are other components in the query that we do care about the enabled state for, of. So here's an interesting one to call out, the system generator in the source generation solution runs in approximately 48% less time when tested on a small game project shared by one of our users. So I just thought that was an interesting thing to call out and a bit curious about what that small game project could be. Hmm. So here's another highlight of the change log here. So the component dependency manager now completes registered jobs in batches instead of individually. This reduces the overhead of structural changes and other sync points. So I think this is super nice. That's always been a little bit of a sticking point about you know, making sure that you're batching your structural changes and they're happening within these designated sync points. I think this is still definitely going to be best practice of something that you want to do, but it's really nice to know that they've made some optimizations to greatly reduce the overhead of that. And of course, we'll have to do some testing to see how much of a difference this makes, because it could be that this makes a big difference in certain scenarios, but maybe not as much in others. Oh, and here's a fun one. They've now added variants for the create entity and create archetype that takes in a read only span of the component types that you want to have for that particular entity or archetype. The advantage of this is we can now create entities or archetypes in a burst context. Oh, and shout out to Nick Chops Boss for the Only Spans merch. And just a couple overall things in the entities package. I do think that it is you know really good that they're adding you know better and more clear error messages to just you know again give us more information about what's going on, how to resolve it, things of that nature. Um, but I did notice that a lot of the bug fixes are in for kind of like really edge cases that most people probably wouldn't. Um, you know, find themselves in, especially if they're following along with the best practices for development and everything like that, which I don't have any problem with them, you know, fixing those bugs, especially if they're just kind of, you know, low hanging fruit, you know, maybe a couple of lines of code change that can resolve this issue. Um, however, there are just a bunch of other little editor bugs, especially that are still kind of a, a pain point for me with Unity ECS. Um, don't want to get into this too much right now because I'm going to be making a dedicated video after Unite where I talk a little bit more about just kind of where the state of Unity ECS is right now and talk about kind of some of my gripes with it. Although still, let me be clear, I do use Unity ECS every single day. Um, so I do think it is still you know, a great and powerful tool set for that. Now going over just a couple quick highlights on some of the other packages. So we have the 
netcode for entities package. Again, this is something that I've been experimenting with myself quite a bit lately. Um, we do have some more testing tools that can kind of you know give us more control about you know how we test our application in different scenarios. I do think the testing tools for netcode for entities is pretty good, um, but glad to know that they're adding more things to that. Um, you know, such as one which is the package fuzz percentage, which is used for some security testing to you know see how your game reacts for certain types of um, attacks that someone might want to deploy upon your game. They also went ahead and increased the cap of thin clients from 32 up to 1000. I think this is really cool because of course we can test you know bigger worlds with more and more entities. Um, it will be really interesting to see though you know how this actually um, you know shakes out performance wise you know especially if we're testing 1000 thin clients within the editor. Um, of course, you know, the local computer is going to have to be like essentially simulating all those local thin clients. So I'm just kind of, you know, curious about the performance of that, um, you know, just testing that all on your computer. Um, but that'll be something maybe I can experiment with a little bit in some of my sample projects. Going into the entities graphics package. So the decal projector is now considered a companion component. With the decal projector, we can essentially project images onto different meshes and geometries within our game world. Um, so now that it sounds like this is a companion component so we can say maybe attach this to some entities within our world so that it can kind of you know follow them along so this can maybe be used for just like a you know really cheap shadow or something of that nature and then the dots physics package did end up getting quite a bit of love um, a lot of things actually related to the um, kind of like you know debug display and inspectors um, it, it was kind of funny just you know showing how many things they fixed and changed in there kind of makes you realize you know how broken some of these debug tools were to begin with um, but overall I think they're in a much better shape now um, sounds like there was a lot of love and effort put towards fixing those things and getting them kind of you know up to speed and also performing really well because that was one of the things that I noticed about um, you know using the physics debug display especially with larger numbers of entities that it would really just tank the performance of my application now I haven't really put it through its paces yet or anything like that, um, but it does sound like they specifically called out some performance improvements for the physics debug display. And then talking about some of the physics colliders, we now have a way to essentially check if a physics collider is unique. So the reason for this is because the way that physics colliders work is they essentially reference a blob asset and we can have say multiple entities reference the same blob asset. So even though they have like two, you know, technically separate colliders, they could be referencing the same, you know, blob asset where the actual collider data is stored. Now this is just kind of a way to check to see, you know, if Collider A and Collider B, do they reference the same collider or are they actually different unique colliders? And if they say are the same collider, there now is a make unique where it basically just converts it, um, you know, the, the other one to reference its own unique collider. This is actually something super helpful for a project that I had been working on recently um, where I did want to do a little bit of, you know, collider sharing to kind of save on memory. Um, so there were some instances where I wanted, you know, a couple colliders to reference the same collider and then other ones um, that were kind of like within a similar area of the project to reference a different collider. So, so having some of these tools would have been kind of helpful to um, help out with that a little bit. So I, I do think these are good tools to have. And it sounds like there is now a custom entity inspector for the physics collider, which maybe is going to give us a little bit more information about you know, kind of what's going on with our colliders. Uh, because previously when you looked at the colliders in the entity inspector, they basically just gave you the serialized hash of that blob data that it was referencing. So it didn't really give us a lot of kind of clear information about, you know, some of the properties of the specific collider. So, um, you know, really exciting that we now have a little bit more insight into that in the Unity Inspector. Okay, so as promised, I'm going to give you a little preview of the Netcode for Entities project that I've been working on. However, before that, I do just want to really quickly give a quick shout out to the Unity Asset Store because they are going to be hosting their annual Black Friday slash Cyber Monday sale where they have over 500 assets available for 50% off. Um, from basically November 15th into December 6th. They're also gonna have a bunch of flash deals where some assets will be available for up to 70% off for a limited amount of time. And then after that, they'll be discounted down to 50% for the remainder of the sale. And also, if you do want a little bit of an added bonus on that, I do have a special coupon code that you can use, which is TurboMakesGamesBF23. 
that's going to give you an additional 10% off your order for any assets that um, were purchased through the Black Friday slash Cyber Monday sale. So anyways, I'll include some links to some of my favorite assets on sale down in the description below, including the Agents Navigation Package as well as the GPU ECS Animation Baker. Those are both fantastic ones that I highly recommend. Okay, so net code for entities. Again, I'm going to be creating a big multi-hour tutorial, basically going through the entire process of creating a full game using Unity ECS and their net code for entities. So this is the sample project that I'm going to be creating. It is a MOBA. It's of course a game similar to like a Dota or a League of Legends, something of that nature, where every person in the game controls a champion that they can move around the map freely and they can attack all the different towers, minions, and other champions in the game. So we're gonna be going over a whole bunch of things. We're gonna be going over, you know, actually connecting into the game, getting all different players uh, into the same game world, keeping track of player input. So when a player clicks, their um, actually character starts moving towards that position as well as doing some client prediction so that the game has a really responsive feel even though this is a server authoritative where basically the server has essentially the final say of what's happening in the game world. We're also just gonna be doing a little bit of basic AI for the different minions as well as towers so they can kind of attack the um, you know opposing team uh, champions and minions as well. And speaking of attacking, we're going to be implementing a little bit of a basic combat system. So the character has a couple different attacks at their disposal. So they have uh, the Q ability, which is an AOE ability, just kind of spawns a big area of effect um, that will damage all enemies within that radius. And then there's also the W ability, which is a skill shot. So you press the W key and then uh, the character basically gets a little bit of a kind of UI indication on the map about you know which direction to aim. And um, by the way, this UI is specific to that player. So you know none of the other players in the game world actually kind of you know, see which direction that you're aiming. And then we actually click, then it's gonna go ahead and just fire a projectile off into that direction. And then of course, you know we're gonna be integrating this with uh, some UI as well as other game events. So you know when the uh, one of the final bases gets destroyed, you know, all the players basically get a message popping up on the screen saying game over, this team wins. And so I'll be going over, you know, how to do all this as well as the theory about netcode for entities and their whole server authoritative feel. So anyways, this tutorial is going to be available 100% free right here over on YouTube. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Still have quite a bit of work to do on this. So don't expect it uh, within the next maybe month or so. Um, but, you know, hopefully not too much longer after than that. So anyways, that's going to do it for today's video. Really hope you enjoyed this look at Unity ECS version 1.1. Let me know what you think of the update down in the comment section below. By the way, if you're going to be at Unite, once again, feel free to come up to me and say hello. Um, check out Unity's Black Friday sale and stay tuned for that awesome Netcode for Entities tutorial. It's gonna be coming out sometime eventually. Anyways, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.